imagine the police coming to your parents' house at 3 in the morning. My father had dialed 911 to report a very large snake in the living room. There was no snake. My father was suffering from hallucinations related to his Parkinson's disease. Lowering the dose got rid of the snakes. Fortunately, he also had significant relief from his symptoms. But this is not always true. Today, millions of people take drugs, but not everyone has great benefit. In cancer, for example, only 30% of people will benefit from a particular drug. 70% are non-responders. So why are so many of us non-responders? Clearly, disease complexity explains a lot of this, but that's not all of it. Surprisingly, there are a number of patients who are simply underdosed. They're given too little drug. And there's a rich literature that supports this. For example, 5-FU, 5-fluorouracil, in a study of colorectal cancer, was shown to, that in only 20% of the patients was the dose appropriate when you measured it in the blood. 30% were overdosed, and 50% were underdosed. In a study of rheumatoid arthritis, 85% of patients had sub-therapeutic levels in their blood of methotrexate. A lot of pain for no reason. Blood levels in patients can vary between 5, 10, even 30-fold if you look in the blood at what the levels are, even when adjusting for body size. Gleevec, a blockbuster drug, was found to have a 17-fold difference when you looked across patients. And interestingly, outcome correlated with the dose. You live three times longer if you had a higher dose. Why does this happen? Well, if you look at a population of patients and give them all the same drug at the same amount, you'll find variation. You'll find low doses, you'll find do high doses. This cuts across the population because of a variety of factors related to genetics, metabolism, we know these. And you can never measure all of these factors when you're actually dosing your patients. This is known as the therapeutic window. Too little, and you actually are a non-responder. Too much, you have side effects. But just right, it works out great. I call this the Goldilocks window. Because of human variation, not everyone falls into this window. There are non-responders and patients who have too little, and there are also those who are adversely affected. And fortunately, our doctors are very clever, and they adjust our doses so we get into the right range for most drugs. However, they never actually measure the level of drug in our bodies, and there can be changes. Some drugs are quite toxic. We're aware of these, like chemotherapy. And in this case, there's a very narrow uh, Goldilocks window where you have to get the dose right, for example, in cancer. And as a result, we tend to err on the side of safety. In this case, you actually give people less dose, and you might go up. Hence, you end up with many non-responders. What can we do about this? Well, we can actually measure the level of drugs in the blood and adjust up or down. This is called therapeutic drug monitoring and adjustment. For the example of 5 fluorouracil when they did this, and got 100% of the patients into the Goldilocks window, toxicity fell from 15% of patients to just 1%, and survival increased on average by six months. I prefer to call this the Goldilocks method, measure and adjust. It's already used for a handful of drugs today. Why not use it for many more? We have the technology. We already use it to measure healthy athletes for performance-enhancing drugs. Why not use it for cancer patients? And in clinical trials where you set drug levels, they often pick the level that will be just enough to work, because certainly you don't want to kill anyone. You don't want to have any adverse events. Is it any surprise that half of clinical trials fail in late-stage trials where you're not measuring levels? As a patient, wouldn't you prefer to have a truly personalized dosing? Wouldn't you like to be like Goldilocks, measure and adjust, not too hot, not too cold, just right? Thank you.